I would like to call this meeting of the Parks and Recreation Committee to order for October 26, 2015. If everybody stand and rise and face the flag. Hey, Linda, roll call. Mr. Paschal? Here. Mr. Sims? Here. Mr. Tenerowitz? Here. Ms. Flesher? Here. Mr. Nelson? Here. Ms. Webster and Mrs. White are excused. Okay, do we have any modifications or additions? Uh, on the minutes, where it says new business, second line down, says Mr. Nelson goes over, this is in re uh, reference to the pickleball presentation. Mr. Nelson goes over unexpected Powerball presentation. Hmm. I'm sorry, what? It's under new business, and it was under the Pickleball Association of America, and it's the second line down, and it's the, s the sentence reads, Mr. Nelson goes over un unexpected Powerball okay. presentation. I think it should be Pickleball. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments on modifications or additions? If there's no other comments, I make a motion that the minutes are approved as corrected. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that brings us up to unfinished business which is the pickleball. Now, I guess, Mr. McCarthy, you're gonna handle that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, at your last meeting, you asked me to get some numbers and uh, and possible sites. Um, the site actually w will affect the numbers, you know, depending on how much prep work you gotta do. If it's a wooded area, you know, there'll be a lot of clearing and prep work. Um, I did speak with, uh, put something out on Florida Recreation and Parks Associations. Uh, we have a website where you can ask questions to other parks and rec professionals that I asked about pickle courts. And uh, the city of Daytona Beach Shores just did two sets of four courts each, eight total courts and with lights, and that was $176,000 uh, for the whole project. Uh, I also got a just a ballpark estimate from McLean Tennis, and they said eight courts with fencing and lights will run 170,000 to 200,000, depending on you know how much prep work has to be done too. Uh, we would also need to add a restroom to those costs because um, if we're going to take on a project like this, we definitely need a restroom. Um, possible sites. I think Pilbert Street Park would be one of the best sites. It's already pretty flat. Uh, there's a big area in the back there. Um, the only other site I could think of, which would save us money, but we'd have to give up a baseball field, would be back here uh, at Friendship Park. And that's about all I have on that. If you all, you know, want to, I know you said you might be interested in moving forward to this and trying to get it in the 16, 17 budget process. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have the, uh, anybody wants to talk about either park that he brought up? Tammy? Um, not any, at this point, no any, not any comments. Rosemary? Uh, what would be the uh, disadvantage of giving up a tennis court on Friendship at Friendship Park? Are they? Uh, I'm not, I didn't say a tennis court, a baseball field. Oh, a baseball field. Yeah. And we said last meeting that it really wasn't used much. Mm-hmm. But Joanne Webster, who kind of represents the Little League Baseball, wasn't too keen on that idea. Yeah, so. I think she asked why it wasn't being used much. Do you know why it's not being used much? They just started fall ball. I know some teams have contacted me to use it. You know, we have some soccer teams that play out there. Once they start their regular league, which starts in February, 
and they are using a sports complex. We really have no practice fields. So that's like the only practice field they have to, you know, use. Do you know what the uh, difference would be if we had to build the start the construction at Filbert rather than back here? Is it much difference? Uh, well, back here you already have a restroom and you already have lights. The lights just have, might have to be a little, you know, rearranged a bit because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're they're set up for lighting a baseball field now. So okay, you know. Well, I guess I wouldn't. I would also um, be against. Uh, taking away the ball field in the back since it is used for practice fields and uh, Friendship Park is uh, a nice nice place to look into, I think. That's all I have. All right, on the Filbert, uh, we're not, I, I would say we wouldn't go for eight courts. I would maybe cut that in half or even two or four, something like that, as far as the cost goes. Uh, maybe the lighting down there would be something like we have at the volleyball course at Riverview Park, if that would be enough lighties for something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. As opposed to putting big concrete posts in the ground with the overhead lights. Yeah, there's several um, tennis court companies uh, that have, like the lights at Schumann on the older four courts. They're they're just kind of like that, not you know, not real high in the air. But on that on that matter the the sports lighting industry is they're pretty pinpoint these days there's like no you know i know you go by the baseball fields but they're the oldest lights we have and then there's a lot of spill out on you know off the fields but right. you look at the football fields and it's pretty much it's right they'll just do the courts you know i don't think it's going to affect the neighborhood too much though well i'm in agreement i could go with either way filbert or friendship and I'll go with uh, what the committee wants to go with. Matt? I'm in agreement with uh, everyone, everything that's been said, uh, with everything that has been spoken so far. And like, um, my only thing I'm just thinking about, like, um, both locations allow room to grow, should growth do uh, become an issue, uh, or will we, so um, have you looked at something to see what would be the maximum amount of co courts thinking about the future? Yeah, well, um, I, I would because. think you'd have more room at Filbert, uh, actually, to mm -hmm. to uh, expand a little more land there. So. And that's what I mean. And, and that's the only thing I'm thinking about, because I know getting away, because like, uh, from listening to the information that was brought forth last week, growth, once we do start, is going to probably be an issue. And then if we had everything, because um, right now, without having a... Um, um, grass on the uh, the actual surrounding area where we could go to if we would look at something that I mean, I, I mean I'm for something that's already built but I hate to see the baseball field go but, but it's not being used so uh, it's, it plays a major factor as a whole but then again Sebastian it is growing and you look at that Fipper Street possibly would be a prime location although it may cost a whole lot more but uh, it would almost kill I use that word it would take care of two things at one time but Again, also those tortoises. It's about maybe two tortoise holes out there, Filbert Street Park. So how would that be a factor? They probably would have to be relocated yes. unless we could work around them. So, yeah. I mean, I'm all about saving money, and uh, but I'm just thinking about the future. I know I, I guarantee you it's probably going to be a lot of growth once we do yeah. start and where it may be already outgrown by the time we put it in over here at uh, the Friendship Park. I mean, if, if you want to go with fewer courts, that obviously is going to cut your costs down too. You know, um, I would say maybe maybe go for six. You know, but they they usually do them in two sets of like two pads. And I did talk to some other people in the industry, and they said, you know, you might want to make them bigger. Pickleball might not take off. You know, <laughs> and then you could turn them into tennis courts if you had to. You know, so, but. Okay, Greg. Uh, yeah, a couple questions. So if we went with Filbert, do we need to do any kind of assessment or find out as far as like the effects of drainage and what it would do to put in courts there? Do we know that that would, that would automatically work? Oh yeah, we would have to get an engineer <coughs> okay. drawings to, you know, to lay out the whole, By the whole property. Saying it doesn't mean that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then allowing for parking and how that's going to impact 
the way that it's drawn up now, whether we would need to reconfigure that and then how that would impact the neighborhood would also be some of my other questions. Yep. And then looking at the total number of, amount of space based on what we decided on as far as the number of courts and then the space that we're needing. Um, so that's my questions around Filbert. And then again, if we decide on the number of courts, is it possible for us to look at reconfiguring friendship instead of maybe just outright getting rid of the baseball field? Is there a way to look at, based on the amount of space that we need, is there a way maybe to shift things so that we could still put something else in there? No. Okay. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty tight. Because, I mean, that it's, whole, it's, that it's whole uh, space wouldn't just... Yeah. The, become, I mean, the whole baseball field wouldn't become all pickleball. So in the yeah. configuration of what we're doing, what do we want to offer to offset that? So could we have an open space where, you know, baseball could maybe still have a place to practice, like to hit and run and do some other things, because that is part of what happens during baseball season is just a, a place to go. So you wouldn't mm. actually hold a game there, but you could still maybe have an open space where you could maybe still you know, hit some balls, run some bases, and do some, you know, little league skills where you still actually have a place to go and do those things, but you don't have a space that's set up to play a game. So maybe that is a, a compromise, that you still have an open spot for a team to go and practice. Mm -hmm. That would be my suggestion. Chris, on Filbert, uh, I know we uh, eliminated the walk path through the woods there. Is the woods part of the city? Is that part of that park too? Yes, it is. Can we move that back to where mm -hmm. we can move? That, uh, that, that, that would be an option we could do, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. As opposed to just that back part of it, mm -hmm. is move part of the woods back in further yeah. and clear it? You know what I'm saying? I yeah. Know yeah. 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 I think. Uh, it looks bigger. It would be. Yeah. When you look at it now, it doesn't seem as big as it right. actually is yeah. what you're saying because there's actually more space. Right, right. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I know it's gonna be more expensive at Filbert because of the lighting, <laughs> but uh, I hate to lose this back here as a, as a practice field, but if we could somehow maybe put a practice field at Filbert without lights, and then we could use this back here. Mm -hmm. If I could okay, just so use a practice saying, field without lights, yeah do it that way you know they could practice you know during the daylight is it would there be an issue with parking on if we did that on filbert um no i, I think there's plenty of room for parking yeah. you know but i you know I, I i would i would recommend putting lights there i mean starting next week it's going to be dark at 5 30. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so <laughs> i know summertime you have plenty of daylight but right. you know but overall, as a, as a, if you're kind of thinking like the development of a park as far as its utilization of the fact that you already have restrooms and tennis courts here, and you do have spillover where some people play both sports, it almost becomes a complex where you've got people playing both pickle and tennis, and the amenities of you know it's a mm -hmm. nice looking park, and then you could. You, you would have more people utilizing that than and then switching out a, a practice field to Filbert as opposed to doing it the other way of making all the other amenities out there from a cost standpoint. Now what about where we were going to put the tennis wall out here? Is that big enough for uh, some courts? Right here? Yeah, behind us, yeah. I think right over here by the uh, Boys and Girls Club. It might be. I'd have to measure it. Yeah. I thought part of that got nixed because of drainage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, we were gung-ho, and then when it came back, yeah. it was that that's a kind of a de facto retention mm -hmm. area. That's also slated for future expansion for the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. All right. Similar to this lot right back here behind the police station, too. That's being set up for an evidence uh, compound, I believe. Oh, this is up in the air. Either one of them I go for. Yeah. That's the whole thing, yeah. Uh -huh. my, other, my other comment would be to look at it and the fact that we already know we have limited space in, in the parks and that we want to 
we've had other requests to do things and try to look at it. If there's a way to do something where if we are going to do it here at Friendship and reconfigure it, to plan it out, this is like if this we have this extra, you know, quote unquote, extra space or space that we can try to figure out what to do long term or potentially put other things in there. Mm -hmm. Or conversely, if we do that at Filbert, if we put the courts there as well to can think about what other possible things that we could do, if we end up putting lights in the bathroom there, then down the road, make the best use of that so that we don't just have kind of open wasted space that's not designated for something so that we're getting the most out of whatever improvement we go for. My personal kind of leaning right now for just getting you know a, a straw vote would be if we could put it here at Friendship with the pickleball and then open up Filbert and you know to have a practice field where it's just kind of an open space and you don't need a lot of infrastructure would be you know you're kind of you're not that way you're not just outright removing the baseball facilities here and you're giving something back right. and then in the future you could develop that more I agree there because we have two fields with you uh, one at each uh, elementary school that aren't used at all. No. Yeah. So yeah. having had a son that played little league, yeah. so you can't go to the you can't go to the schools and use because the baseball. So the little leagues are not allowed to go to the schools and use the fields that are there. That's part of. I mean, so having had two sons in little league, it, you know, we were practicing over here in Gifford. I mean, there's just a limited number of places mm -hmm. you go. The school fields, unless that changes from the school district. Those aren't an option. Yeah. They're just, they're not opened up for after public use. Because I know when I had my You can use them, you, you're supposed to get permission from the principal, uh, though. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. They told you as a coach, you're like, you're really not supposed to do when, when they were built, the city actually paid for those fields. We could change that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I, I could look in, you know, look into the, I think um, after 9-11, they, tightened up security everywhere and that was a fallout from that uh if we could change that as a because the agreement the city has with nice them they're supposed they're to let people something use something that doesn't <laughs> only gets used during the yeah. school time that would be a yeah. great resource to the community as a whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they say they have a, a lot of after school programs and after school programs goes for a certain period of time and they say um it could almost a conflict with the after school program because they have they, they have they have several laws that uh i think the Je jessica longstreet law and it goes to uh, what can happen, who needs to be out there. It's for as bad person, personnel while the school activities are in progress. So that's, well, that's one reason why they don't let the team. What time did your practice start? Pardon? What time did your practice start usually? Uh, in the spring, we were starting at like 6. Mm -hmm. It's generally the time after that's school good. is yeah, over, good. 6 o'clock. I know when I come up through Little League uh, with my son, we used uh, both fields at uh, Hobart Park, both of them down there. But the thing was transportation to get the kids down there. It was and the Roseland thing, also. Yeah. Yeah. Roseland Park. <clears throat> but I'm leaning either way on this. Uh, I don't know what we need from uh, everybody, Chris, on this. Uh, I'd go either way, Friendship or Filbert. I think you need to pick one or the other. One or the other, huh? okay. <laughs> so we can move on with this project. Great, Tammy. <laughs> um, I go with Philbert. Philbert, okay. Rosemary. Um, yeah, as I said before, I, if we could compromise and build a practice field over at uh, Philbert, that that would be great to use this in the essence of um, money. We could uh, use the practice field back on Friendship. Uh, so. I would go with friendship as long as we could build a practice field on Filbert. And I will go the same way with her on that one. Friendship with the practice field at Filbert. And I can say I'm with Filbert, but I look at it like, well, I know you want one, so I'm with Filbert because I, I know um, it's going to cost a whole lot more. But like Chris just mentioned, if they do build a practice field right now, you're going to need lights there. And that's going to defeat almost the whole purpose of having it a field, a practice field without lights. Because right now, this they like saving time starts in a couple of days, and it's going to go through probably March and so. So if they're going to start practicing now, but again, like like Greg mentioned that. Baseball season, though. Okay, so like, but someone with sports practicing though, so practice is primarily going to be at 
in the springtime for baseball. Is there any fall ball taking place? So there's no fall ball at all going on? Cindy. I mean, if that's the case, then, I mean, I'll take, take back Filbert and go with, like, uh, hip. I'm on looking at because I know baseball is almost year-round now. Right. But, but, but the heavily impacted part of it is in the springtime? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then I, I'll take my favorite back and go with uh, Friendship Park back here. Friendship, okay. All right. And my vote is for Friendship with okay. practice field. Okay. Okay. Okay, Chris, you got that. All right. All right. Public input. I would like to welcome Mr. Our City Manager, Joe Griffin, here, if he has something to say or anything. No? Okay. All right. Did we decide how many? Did we decide how many we wanted to look into? How many um, courts we wanted to look into? Six, you think, yeah. Chris? Is that what you said? Six. Yeah. Well, when the pickleball people were here, they were asking for sixteen. That was a little grandioso plan, I think. Yeah. But <laughs> well, we. I do know. I wish we would have built six clay courts instead of four. Mm. You could have had a lot more tournaments there and stuff. So I would. Yeah, I would think six. Six. Would be. six to start off with, yeah. you know, if. We'll see if, how it works out. And the know. size of tennis courts, just in case we needed to yeah. convert Yeah, you, you would do the slab big enough for, Okay. you'd probably turn it into two tennis courts versus six. Okay, Yeah. very good, thank I, you. I think you can get three pickleball courts on each tennis court. Okay, yeah. excellent, yeah. thank you. And Chris, uh, in closing, like uh, if something do happen and it's uh, a pretty good amount of response from it, six initially, would it, so then if, um, a community response do, does occur, like uh, will it be what, I mean, uh, it's a possibility that it, it is room to make double size or just add a couple more mm -hmm. back here? Back there, it's gonna be tight, but we'll, we'll you know, like mm -hmm. I said, we'll, we'll have to get an engineered plan to redo, you know, everything, so. So more than likely the, the actual yeah. addition, if addition yeah. need to take place, probably gonna have to occur somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think also with Frontier Park, if we, Go with that practice field. That it could be done in house, probably. Make a, yeah, Filbert. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Public input. Anybody from the public would like to speak? I see nobody. Okay. New business. Stonecrop Park. No trespassing signs. Mr. McCarthy. Uh, yeah, we had a resident contact us through the uh, Parks and Rec uh, contact form. And they were wondering if they could get the no press, no trespassing signs taken down at Stonecrop, because the kids like to go play down there, and I guess someone's calling the police on them, and then the police are chasing them out of there. So, I guess we just brought this to you for discussion to see. There, uh, there is some history with this. I'm yeah, not no. totally <laughs> familiar with all of it. Mr. Griffin might be able to help you out on that also. So. Uh. I know uh, I go by there quite a bit as a patrol on my uh, when I'm running as a volunteer and I go way back to when my son was here when he was 11 12 years old if I couldn't find him he was on a rope swing out there going across that little uh, water and uh, I've always known the trespassing signs to be there I, I can't remember ever not being there in the trespassing signs I don't know when they put them up I have no idea yeah it was a long time ago. I was going to say. <laughs> it, it is a beautiful piece yes, of property. It it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably one of the prettiest the city owns, you know. So, but it, it very, it's very overgrown with pepper trees. It would take a lot of work, you know. I think this resident was just saying, you know, why can't we take the no trespassing signs down so the kids can play down there, you know, by the south prong of the Sebastian River is what basically what it is. Yeah. Well, I'll open it up. Tim, are you got any comments on Actually, it? Actually, I'm not familiar with it, so. Okay, you're not. It's, it would be, if you come off of Bevan and Laconia back here. Okay. Take Majestic down and make a left mm -hmm. at Stonecrop. And there's a, a, like a, it's the south prong of actually, the, you know, where the canoe launch is on the other side. Is what it does, and it feeds into the south prong of the uh, Sebastian River. Is what it is, yeah. And it's quite a. You can actually take a what a canoe through the whole thing, I guess, yeah. So, but there's a finish. sign that states no trespassing. No trespassing, right? So, yeah. why and kids are so why are, why is that sign still there? Well, <laughs> if I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if kids are allowed to go down there, take the sign down. Is it a 
is it a park or what so what's the designation it should it be correct it's coming to uh it, it is a designated park property and i just linda just gave me something from jan king from our community development department excerpt from city council meeting consensus in 1993 to post it no trespassing and no parking temporarily but mostly just discussion after that Temporarily. And I actually, we tried to put like a boardwalk overlook out there one time. Yeah, no. Yeah. We had a lot of people complaining about it. So yeah. we had this one resident call. Now they'll hear this. We may get the other residents come and say, no, leave it the way it is. But I guess have to, we want to get your opinion. I'll have to go look at it. I don't, I, yeah. I'm not going to say anything if I've never even yeah. seen it. But if it's public property. Yes. Then there should not be a sign that says no trespassing. Right. I think it should be taken down. Yeah. And the initial purpose that it, uh, an initial purpose for the no trespassing sign, I know you just read something, was it clear for the, was it clear what the purpose was for it? Because it was, was it I clear? believe some neighbors were complaining about kids hanging out down there. Mm -hmm. so, yes. 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 And you so, said temporarily too, right? Temporarily, so like yeah. These neighbors might not be here anymore. Because if, if it wasn't a, a, a purpose, I mean, that's a good purpose. I'm not excluding that purpose at all. I'm just saying that um, if it's public property, that's, that's a tough one. I would like to go out there and see. Yeah. yeah I'd like to go out there and see. Well, it was in 93. It could have been my son. It could have been. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, if you all want to take a ride out there, we yes. can look at it. Yeah, yeah. So it ends off of Laconia. Yeah. Well, okay. you're going to make a either Greenbrier or Majestic over that way. Okay, make a right, then it'll take you down to Stonecrop. And Stonecrop will be on the left side. If it's designated a park, it just seems a little inane to have a no trespassing sign there. I mean. Yeah, I mean we have a lot of other undeveloped park properties in the city, and they. We don't really have no trespassing signs there. Yeah, so w even without seeing it, I would have to agree that the sign should probably come down, let the kids enjoy the park. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I think um, the city manager probably could expand on this, but he might want to take this to council, but he wanted to get a consensus from you first. Right, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, good evening. Um, Chris read my mind exactly. Since council took this action and uh, when was it? December 8th of 93. I think it's appropriate that uh, council direct staff to take the sign down if that's what they want to do. And uh, if you direct me tonight, I'll get that on the next agenda. Now, Wednesday, it's too late for Wednesday's agenda. And our next meeting after that is uh, November. Next council meeting is November 18th, correct? Yes, 18th, so, um, but I was out there today, as a matter of fact, and um, looking at this because Chris has given me a heads up on this and also the uh, resident has uh, sent emails around to council and such. And it's, um, it's pretty rough back there. Uh, there's not places for parking. I don't know if you can see this picture. Somebody has erected on one of the trees a kind of a lifeguard stand that uh, built a, yeah. a chair out there that's elevated probably six, seven feet off the ground, something like that. So um, uh, if, if y'all, if that's your consensus tonight to have council take another look at this, I'm happy to put this on the next agenda, which would be n November 18th. I would say uh, I would be in favor of taking the sign down, but I, I also would be to put Put this on council and also the liability if we do take it down yeah. if they get hurt out there yeah especially if they have a little yeah. lifeguard type thing up there too so i mean that's because i know years ago there was a gator in there yeah. yeah yeah so it's a little it's a little rough there i mean it, it is mm -hmm. uh but uh and it's but it's kind of scenic at the same time it is, yes mm -hmm. um and i think this resident wanted a place to launch his kayak was that correct chris yeah, I think so. That and then the kids playing down there too. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough to launch a kayak. Plus, there's so many pepper trees up and down that river. It'd be tough to yeah, <laughs> get, go very far in a kayak <laughs> without clearing that out. So, okay, Greg, you want to look at it first, or you want to go ahead and make a decision? No, go ahead and uh, okay. yeah, I can go look at it and still move okay. forward with All putting right. it on for council. I mean, that yeah. won't prohibit okay. me from. 
I agree with everybody else. I just want to see it just to know. Okay. All right. I, I would be in favor of putting it before council. Okay. All right. Matt? I'm in favor with putting it before council. I'm uh, also. Okay. 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 Unanimous. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Staff matters. Mr. McCarthy. Uh, we have a few events coming up. Um, this Thursday, the 29th, is the homecoming parade for the high school. Starts at 4 o'clock. Um, and the homecoming games, Friday. <laughs> but uh, And then we have our Halloween costume contest down at the park this Saturday, the 31st. And that starts at 10 a.m. And the clam bake is next weekend, right. November 6th, 7th, and 8th. Okay. And that's about all I have. Do you have anything, Mr. Griffin? No? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Chris brought it up about the homecoming. I had that. Uh, the 5K run we have Saturday morning down on In River Drive. And then uh, I'll be out Halloween night with most of the volunteers. So everybody out there, be careful. There's going to be a ton of small kids running around the streets out there. So be careful with it. I said to Clem Becky, he wrote that up. Uh, Veterans Day, November 11th. Thanksgiving is the 26th of November. And we also have our workshop coming up. I believe it's the 23rd, right? Okay, right here. And I think kudos to the parks personnel for the job well done. Parks are looking good for what we have. Yeah. And that's all I have. Tammy? Um, Chris, is it possible, I was taking a jog around the park, clear on the east end, there is a dead tree. Is there any way of getting that thing removed? Which park? Um, Hardy Park. There's like a, a tree stump where one k got killed off. I mean, it's just pure gray. It's just an eyesight, an eyesore. Yeah, if it's a certain size, I have to get a tree removal permit, but I can take okay. care of that. Okay, it's, yeah. it's just... Yeah, if it's dead, it's, it's usually not it's a problem. It's pure gray dead. <laughs> okay. It's right on the very, very east end there. Yeah. Otherwise, the grounds are looking real good. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, I also agree with you, John. The parks look great. Um, I did check out the bathrooms at... Uh, the ball fields, and they look very nice. You have new soap dispensers, they were clean. Um, if I could push it a little bit, Chris, maybe if we could put a coat of gray paint on the floor, I think that would make a ton of difference if you have any in the shed. Um, other than that, everything looks great, and I thank you. Matt? I can just shadow what everyone has already said. Thanks to, to the park crew and the city staff for everything. That's all. Greg? Um, the other matter that we had from last meeting was the suggestion of doing a um, grand opening for the skate park. So I emailed uh, Joe if we try to find a potential date. I think we had kicked around sometime in January, January. and February. Yeah. Um, and then the possibility of doing a t-shirt contest and a skate competition. And if we're in agreement of that, then we need to set some of the parameters of the different things that we would want in and around those. Um, so I printed out just a, a generic uh, t-shirt official rules contest to get an idea of some of the different things we would incorporate and then equally try to decide if we want to do a skate competition, uh, setting age range and different things. And again, there's other, we don't have to reinvent the wheel as far as forms and liability and everything else. So I don't know how we want to, willing to do as much as we want, but to Include the group as far as what we want to set as far as parameters and I don't know about the first thing would be to set a potential date date right and then yeah. from there try to figure out what we want to do from that right so I'm not sure how we go about that uh, I think what we're gonna to have to do it because uh, with no meeting in November just a workshop and look I was looking at the calendar for December as far as a meeting it's gonna be right around Christmas time I think our next meeting is gonna to have to be like January yeah unless we go it would be the 28th of December. That would be right after Christmas, our next meeting. And I wouldn't try to do this event before the, I think we agreed, we wouldn't try to do this until like yeah. February, March-ish, March March yeah, yeah, but yeah. just to have enough lead in time to know, right. you know, if we're gonna do a, if we're gonna do a, a t-shirt design contest, you know, like who the, who, who the vendor would be, who's gonna do that, what, how do you go back to uh, setting a contract, 
what the cost is then to figure that out, and then to back that up to say okay and then you know if you're going to do a silk screen there's a number of the, the colors that you could do so that you put that into the contest rules i mean there's a lot kind of mm -hmm. involved in that okay well first we'll go with how does everybody feel about the monday bef after christmas do you want to do that or no you want to wait till january i won't be here you won't be here for december mm -hmm. Okay. I, can't, I can't promise that I'd be there. Okay, okay. So we'll make it January as our next meeting in. I don't want my calendar to go up there. Would anybody have a problem with setting the grand opening for March in this way at January? We can get everything together. We can yeah. get the word out. Right. Yep, I have no problem with that. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Is that good, Joe? Would that date impede anything with our Little League? Because this Little League, I mean, well, I guess it wouldn't at all because the skate parks on the other side and then right there so yeah, I mean, fine. That's fine. there's always going to be something going oh, around yeah, sure. at some time but it, yeah. i mean in general um and then what we're thinking in terms of i mean obviously that like to see the parks and rec committee there as well but then a, you know some representation True. from the city or the city council in order to, to open it all right mm -hmm. yeah all right so extend that invitation when we get in a date all right linda we'll go back to making our meeting in january whatever day that is. Okay. You're asking me what date that's gonna be? No, my calendar only goes to December here. Yeah. Oh, I don't think January is on there. The fourth Monday would be the 25th. Okay. Yeah. January 25th. January 25th. Okay, Chris on the, uh, before we get any further here on the, the budget here. Is this pretty well up to date on this thing you sent out? Yeah. Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That just shows you what um, what monies have been taken, you know, brought in, and then the encumbrances you have for this budget year. Because so. I know a lot of these places are being built out real quick here, and uh, some of them's going to be coming to an end here shortly. Yeah. So. So the end of. Looks like the balance that we have right now is about six hundred thirty-one thousand, six thirty. Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Now. Is there a question, Mr. Griffin? Or no? Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. Okay, we got the meeting set for January. Okay, we're going to see if we can shoot for March on the grand opening for the skate park. Okay, and I guess that's going to be it. I call this meeting adjourned.